Amina Muhammad suddenly became a surrogate mother to her nephew Muhammad. The four-month-old lost his mother to complications from severe malnutrition. Amina tries to breastfeed him, but she too needs nourishment. They were referred here only a few days ago. There was hardly anything to eat in the camps, and we were not allowed to go out. I think that's what killed this boy's mother, and the father lost his mind. I am left to take care of him and five other siblings. As bad as he looks, she says the boy's condition has improved, and there are dozens like him in this hospital run by an aid agency. It's quite a, a big one, and all of the people that are enrolled into the program are uh, considered a severe uh, acute malnutrition. According to uh, the global uh, WHO criteria, the numbers we're seeing just keep skyrocketing. Aisha is six months old. Doctors say the lesions on her frail body indicate how serious her condition is. Some of these severely malnourished are brought here for specialized care, more than a hundred of them. Doctors Without Borders staff who operate this facility say they receive more than 500 cases every day at another facility in Maiduguri. Thousands more are out there in camps, liberated towns and villages where food is scarce and getting there is risky. The food crisis has already claimed hundreds of lives. Nigerian authorities have been accused of negligence and of concealing the scale of the problem. They say they are working hard to meet the desperate need and have launched investigations into how tons of food aid disappeared from camps across the northeast. But for the families who have lost their loved ones to this devastating crisis, that is no consolation. Amina is hopeful that young Muhammad will live, but her major concern if that happens is how a poor, displaced 54-year-old woman can look after him and five siblings. Ahmed Idris, Al Jazeera, Maiduguri, Nigeria.